And if I didn't have my case coming up, I'd like to come back with you gentlemen when this is over with and really lay the law down what's going on in this country. It's nothing but a lot of hookwick that you people have been giving me for a long time. And I wish I wasn't on trial and get this case coming up. I'd like to talk to the United States of America what's going on. Well, it's really started burgeoning uh, in the 20th uh, century, in the 1900s. Organized crime began to grow in many cities, particularly here in Providence, because we had a large immigrant population from Sicily. And the mob originally started off, yes, trying to make money uh, here in Providence, but also they did a lot of good things to protect uh, the other Itlo American immigrants. The heyday of the mob in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, were the 60s and the 70s and a bit into the 80s, and then it started to deteriorate. Oh, the heyday was really a whole panoply of crimes. The reason for that, of course, was uh, uh, they're very smart. Sometimes people think mob guys are dem D's and does kind of guys. That's not true at all. Uh, they are people who are incredibly intelligent. They pulled some scams, for example, on Wall Street that would make Bernie Madoff look like a piker. Uh, but of course, they had the traditional kinds of so-called organized crime. Uh, which were as shaking down people, extortion. Of course, they viewed it as just protecting your business from other guys who might try to shake you down. Uh, and of course, murder for hire, et cetera. So their repertoire grew and grew as a result of their trying to protect their turf and their way of doing things. Uh, Raymond Patriarca, of course, uh, his family go all the way back to Italy. He settled here in Rhode Island, worked his way up. Uh, first doing so-called low-level kinds of crime, but eventually became the crime boss of New England. Raymond Patriarca used to operate out of a store that was called Coinomatic, and when you think about it, it's really sort of ingenious because the Coinomatic used to rent out, rent in quotes, because it was obligatory to take his machines, but it would be like cigarette machines, pinball machines, etc. And when you come right down to it, right, they're all cash businesses. So it was very ingenious, obviously, for him to be able to hide money uh, predicated on all this cash business that he was doing. It also served to money launder uh, because illegal cash, he could just count it as part of the proceeds of that business. Obviously, uh, uh, Raymond Patriarca didn't get where he was by being an altar boy. So there were people that he actually had to fight even within the mob uh, to have them killed. Uh, so uh, he had one guy who was a henchman by the name of uh, Joe Barboza, who was responsible for carrying out 19 hits and murdering people that were ordered by uh, Raymond Patriarca. To outsiders, of course, they feared him, but because uh, he wanted control of the neighborhood, he also would do some good things for people in the neighborhood. There's a famous story uh, where a woman had her son uh, injured. He was about to lose his eye. He had no money for an operation. Raymond Patriarca paid for that operation for that woman's son. So a lot of the people, uh, at least in his neighborhood, really watched out for him. You know, my FBI friends used to refer to the fact that Raymond Patriarca had a thousand eyes in the neighborhood. And what they meant by that is any time they wanted to come in for surveillance, probably try to do a wire tap or whatever, all the old ladies in town would call Raymond Patriarca to tell them, hey, the feds are here, the cops are around, et cetera, to warn them. Raymond Patriarca was in and out of jail so many times. I, I believe it was a total of only 12 years uh, that he ended up serving in the totality of his life. But the ultimate irony about that is uh, one of his longest sentences was something four years, even though he'd been convicted, of ordering the murder of two people. It was like a four-year sentence. It's, it's, it's legion how sometimes earlier than that uh, he would go to jail. Uh, there was some issue of whether a governor, uh, or at least the legal counsel of the governor, was paid off because he was uh, uh, paroled early uh, from his sentence, even though he wasn't eligible. So the, the mob had their hands into a lot of pies. Uh, it, it's really difficult back in those days to prosecute the mob because you never knew who was on the take that were cops constables on patrol, with judges being on the take, were they, weren't they, political leaders, etc., because they passed out a lot of money to stay in control. Patriarca died in 1984. Uh, he, at the time, uh, was in the uh, 
home of his paramour, uh, and he died of a heart attack. What happened is usually uh, the hierarchy in the organized crime modality, it would go to the son. And Raymond had a son, Raymond Patriarca Jr. Uh, I never felt that his heart and soul were really into becoming the crime boss, but because of heritage, he in fact became that crime boss. He used to have very big lips, so the mob is famous for giving people names, so they called him Rubber Lips. Uh, it was, and that's not exactly uh, a, a name that inspires confidence in the leader. Raymond Patriarca Sr., they called him the man. He dies, and now Rubber Lips becomes the head of uh, organized crime. So even listening, listening to it, you know there's going to be a problem. But uh, Patriarca Jr. held on for a while. Uh, he uh, eventually got convicted himself, and then it went to another guy, Nicky Bianco, who also was in and out of prison during that time. I think the mob really is a shadow of its former self. Two reasons for that, I think. Number one, the RICO Act, the Racketeering Act. Once you could seize the instrumentality of the crime, take the house, take the car, uh, take the business that they were operating out of upon conviction, it really made inroads into decimating the mob financially. And secondly, the old discipline in the mob broke down. You know, omerta, silence, it really was honored by the original Sicilians who ran the mob. But younger guys coming up, I remember uh, as attorney general, I sometimes would receive tips from people actually in the mob. And the reason for that was they were angry that somebody else got a promotion they thought they should have gotten. So there went Omerta. But there still is this lingering legacy, I think, uh, where people try even to pass themselves off, believe it or not, as mobsters. They try to imply, I'll break your legs unless you do this for me, <laughs> etc. So in a way, it's a sad legacy from the wannabes, who really aren't mob-connected guys, who still try to capitalize on the legend uh, that existed, both real and, and apocryphal, uh, about uh, Raymond Patriarca.